starting the live now in a second hello hello so welcome at the feminine the place where we hold sacred virtual circles for women around the globe and uh, empower them to really live a much more feminine life and a feminine connected life right what does that mean well it deeply means owning our feminine heritage and it's it's a uh, it can be it can feel uh, confusing and abstract because we've been so immersed in a patriarchal society we've been so absorbing the masculine values and principles all our life that you know actually understanding that there is a feminine energy and a feminine heritage out there for us seems like a blind spot right but that's exactly the conversation we are here to engage with. You know, how do we take back our deep connection with the divine feminine? And how do we use this connection to really empower our feminine process as women? Here at the feminine, we hold space for ancient practices, sacred rituals, you know, um, breath work and guided meditations that deeply connect women with the divine feminine and, uh, you know, help them understand their own feminine innate subtle energies inner energies and help them balance the feminine and the masculine by nurturing more the feminine because i think the masculine was already nurtured right and allow us to step into our feminine nature and use that nature to create everything we want in our life so we're holding space for this and we're also creating rites of passages for women to you know really go uh, in full depth uh, into their own you know, process of creating and redefining who they are as women while they are deeply connected to their feminine nature and step into that and express that into the world and win in whatever they want to uh, win um, in their life. So welcome, welcome everybody. As, as the algorithm kicks in and people join more. Uh, today's topic uh, is a very uh, embodied topic, meaning that we want to focus on, you know, routine and practices and rituals and what are the, you know, self-care rituals and how can we turn them into soul care rituals and why would that be relevant and important for us women well i think you know as as we've progressed more into the world of self-development of spiritual evolution of of really you know meeting uh, especially in the digital world with a lot of teachers from all walks of life from all spiritual lineages you know, mindfulness, yoga, uh, you know, breath work, meditation, uh, really being more at ease and at peace with your own thoughts came through and it became something natural for us to engage with. Um, and um, really, you know, um, uh, something that we should focus on. So whenever we want to start going deeper into our development or take care of ourselves more we go to yoga right because it's such a mainstream thing now or we start a mindfulness class or you know we understand that we have to be more out of the mind and more into the body right but i want to give a different perspective here uh, or an alternative to yoga and mindfulness although i think they're very important and they're very precious and i use them in my own personal process as well but if I would have done just that, I think I would have missed a lot of, you know, uh, the space for my femininity to flourish. And one of the things that I've learned in, in my initiations and in the practices comes steaming from shamanism and Tao and Tantra that specifically work with the feminine energy and they're designed for women, right? By women. <laughs> um, is that, you know, uh, for women connecting with their spirituality, connecting with their energy uh, is, a, is a dance. It's not something very rigid. On the contrary, something organic, artistic, creative, uh, and it stems from their own connection with their emotions and sensations in the moment, right? So, uh, one I received, I was in an interview this week, and somebody asked me, So, what exactly do you do? Like, what exactly is the one thing that you do with a woman who comes to you to connect more with her femininity? And I say to her, Well, it pretty much is 
sit, uh, you know, sit comfortably and start breathing with your belly. Sit comfortably and start breathing with your heart. But this time, not just to quiet your mind and achieve peace of mind and become Zen, but rather ask your body, ask your belly, ask your heart, how do you feel? What's moving through you? What would you like to express in the moment? What's there for you to uh, really uh just a second i um just a second because the technique team is telling me that i'm not live on facebook so whatever that is i just replied sorry for the intervention so i'm gonna i'm gonna keep rolling and then we'll see uh how that will unfold uh and um yeah it was really you know how do you connect with your emotions and what are your emotions telling you about you the truth of you in this moment right and what would your body need and how would your body move and you know how would you use that movement to express more of who you are and i've learned that when women are guided into this process they become you know they tap into their inner rhythms and uh they tap into their you know um whatever's going on within them and that just opens uh you know opens a dimension within themselves where they are experiencing their emotions and they're creating space for their emotions to be expressed and that brings deep healing to a woman it regulates her hormones it regulates her you know happy hormones in the brain it starts making her be more aligned with her own self so feminine rituals, you know, from the simplest action of just breathing with your body, uh, with your belly, sorry, to more advanced type of practices that we teach here, you know, uh, its main focus is to give you pleasure and deep healing by regulating you, by, you know, uh, making the, all the pieces of you aligned into the moment uh, and enforcing and empowering the body as a channel for all your primal energies to be met, seen, loved, contained, accepted, and then, you know, infuse you with whatever you want to do in life, whatever you want to create, whatever you want to express into the world. So feminine rituals are really, you know, a practice that when women engage with, uh, bring deep healing and deep self-expression in a feminine way. Um, and, and they're not rigid there. You can, you know, you can create feminine rituals by, you know, really being, uh, creating an altar and beauty around you and putting incense and playing music and really just breathing, doing mantras or dancing or, you know, touching yourself with sacred, um, sacred, uh, attention, um, grounding yourself in the earth, uh, hugging trees, you know, being in nature and letting the sun infuse you uh, with energy, you know, being in the water and being soft and letting the water caress you, you know, all of these things. And I think when women really give themselves permission to engage with their feminine rituals, uh, they become very creative. So just, you know, uh, making this not a monologue and a, uh, tuning into a dialogue within the sacred circle. What are some, you know, rituals or practices or feminine rituals that you love and you started doing, whether you did it consciously or unconsciously, that really, you know, really speak to your heart, really speak to your body. They make you feel, you know, good in the moment. Um, for example, uh, one of the greatest rituals I loved to do, and I've learned it in, a, in the tantric tradition, was to um, sit in darkness, in complete pitch darkness, dark blue uh, darkness, um, at the end of the day, and um, lying on the floor, uh, on my yoga mat, and just sink into the floor. You know, it is a kind of a mindfulness practice because it works with just letting go. Uh, but it's not mindfulness in the sense that I'm sitting in a lotus position with my uh, with my back straight and I'm just, you know, focused of, of letting go of my mind and the thoughts in my mind. No, I'm just making love with, um, with the floor. I'm immersing myself deeply into the floor, right? And it's a profound practice. I love it because it just cleans all the energies I've absorbed throughout the day from me, 
you know, I kind of like come back to my own unique self and I can let go. I can melt into the floor. I can dissipate into the floor. I don't have any boundaries anymore, you know, and it's a very profound, good way to transition towards sleep um, because, you know, it's really uh, blind, right? Blank. Um, and I've used it uh, for many, many years, especially when I lead courses and I get like through the emotions, women absorb a lot of, you know, what's going on around them. They were sensitive creatures, right? Um, and so please write me, what's one gesture, one family ritual, one practice that you love to do um, that connects you with your femininity? Please, please, please share this with us so that, you know, the whole circle gets enriched with, you know, your contribution. Um, and especially when I'm leading courses, I, I love to end the day with that because we absorb everybody's emotions, the subtle nuances of everything that's happening in our space around us. And if we can declutter, if we can let go, you know, that's such a profound way to just, you know, reconnect with ourselves and not lose track of ourselves, right? And not feel tired and psychically overwhelmed uh, and in, you know, in, in not doing, in doing that, uh, being overwhelmed for a while, even depressed, right? It can lead to depression because, you know, it's like, um, uh, absorbing, absorbing, absorbing all the things that, you know, are in the environment and that just disconnects us more and more and more from who we are. Right. So it's, a, it's a beautiful feminine ritual to come back. Feminine rituals I've distinguished. First of all, they're feminine. Right? They speak to how we've language things. They speak to how our body wants to move. They speak to our heart, our passion, our fire. You know, they're not rigid. They're not, you know, mental or outside the mental world, but in a rigid way. They're flowing all the time. They're connected to emotions, right? All the rituals that I've been, you know, immersing myself in or create for my own practice have been deeply emotional. I give myself room to cry. I give myself room to feel everything that's going on in my life. And that has informed me of my own emotions. It has informed me of the things that I truly desire and want. It's a very, uh, very educational process, if you want, about the depth of who you are, right? I was, I was uh, you know, exploring uh, this with, uh, in a dialogue with a friend who said to me that for the life of her, you know, she received the feedback and for the life of her, she didn't really get that she was a control freak. And I know her very well and she's a control freak. And I actually asked her, come on, like with all the talks we ever had and there's so many talks on the subject, you never know, you never knew you are a control freak. Like this is a news information, to, like this is news for you. And she says, yeah, this is news for me. I don't, I don't relate to me as a control freak. I never got it. It never registered. And I said, oh my God, right? And then I had this insight, you know, we can spend so many years educating ourselves on so many topics, right? But I think, you know, unless we educate ourselves on us, <laughs> you know, all that education just becomes theory, right? So unless we actually learn about who we are, learn how we uh, function, how we feel, how we get triggered, you know, what works for us, what doesn't work for us, our boundaries, right? Um, then... Um, all that education, right? It becomes theory. And the feminine rituals are the sacred space one can create for themselves that nobody needs to be present, right? It's, it's, a, it's a secret time with yourself in which you can just be yourself, right? And I encourage women to start simple, just five minutes, private space, put a song or a playlist of feminine mantras or not, and just breathe with your belly or breathe with your heart and don't do nothing just breathe you know don't have to do stuff to become zen be zen by just being with you you know and you may not feel things very deeply from the get-go but if you do that on a regular basis the constancy of the practice turns into a ritual and a ritual different than a practice is that it's something profound because it brings the sacredness dimension into it, right? So we don't do practices in the feminine work, we do rituals because rituals have the spiritual dimension as a component within the practice. So it's like 
you're breathing, but you're not just breathing physically with your heart, you're also breathing with your soul. And you're tapping into that soul dimension, even if you're picking up messages or not from your own soul, right? So it's like you're doing that as a way for you to intentionally connect with your soul and create space and room for yourself and your soul in that moment. And that just opens a dimension within a woman's universe. It makes her close her eyes from the outer world and move inward and really understand that there's a universe inside. And what you'll pick up is you, the beauty of you, the radiance of you within that universe. And for some of us, it may be a very new inner movement, a very new step into our process, into life, right? But such an amazing step to take because, you know, once we get hold of our emotions, hold of our sensations, they bring messages about our ourselves. They bring messages about, you know, where we are moving in life, what we want, what we don't want, what's going through, what's truly going on with us. So it's very educational, it's very informative. And because it is so informative and through practice, it kind of, you know, creates deeper, deeper, deeper awareness with our own inner self. It becomes very healing, deeply healing. But, you know, you don't, you heal in a spontaneous movement. You heal because you show up to yourself and it's a, it's a gesture of self-love and gentleness and care and compassion that you bring to your own self every single day. And um, in my link in bio and Instagram and also on Facebook in the comments, if it will work, uh, when it will work, uh, we have, you know, a playlist of our, uh, of our podcast, season one of our podcast. We curated a playlist of rituals and feminine rituals and how to take your self-care routine to a soul care routine uh, and the importance of that in your process as women and in your evolution as women. And hit, you know, hit, uh, hit uh, the button and listen to it, binge it. Uh, it's really worth binging it because it will give you a context, you know. I always say start small. You're busy women. We have a lot of roles playing around, uh, uh, you know, uh, and fulfilling. And we have a big plate, most of us, right? Or we're in this deep, immersion in our own healing process and we're more available for you know connection but wherever you are right um you know if you're here and you've connected with me and you're in the conversation uh consider that you're more ready to go into a real practice a feminine type of uh, real practice and you can start small you can start with five minutes you know, I've actually recently had, uh, you know, I'm going to not put all the credit on this beautiful small practice, but I recently uh, coached a woman who really after nine years of being soul, solitary, decided that she was working during these nine years to be in a relationship, but she couldn't manifest it. And now she was kind of like at the end of probably have all her limits and she was like you know what I'm, I'm i'm taking myself out of the comfort zone this is it i'm gonna step into a relationship this is my own number one priority this is everything that i do i'm gonna work only with that and she did everything she did therapy she did praying she did like a lot of things to build up momentum for that and when she reached me we had three sessions just it was planned to have three sessions and when she reached me she ask me so you're the feminine specialist what should i do to get a relationship <laughs> and i made a very simple distinction and i said i don't know what you should do to make to to manifest a relationship i'm not an expert on that you know i can give you a lot of things but i wouldn't go there in this process that you're having with me i would go there into something very important because in the midst of wanting to have a very strong intimate, deep, romantic relationship with somebody, we get so much in the mind of achieving that objective that we disconnect from the very reason and the very purpose of why we want a relationship, which is to connect with intimacy and emotional connection with somebody in an intimate way. And I would start informing the universe of wanting a relationship and creating room for, for a relationship by a simple gesture that you can do every morning before tapping into your IG account, <laughs> before opening your phone, which is put a hand on your heart and ask your heart, greet your heart, hello, welcome heart, 
right into this beautiful new day and ask your heart are you ready to love today are you ready to feel and be connected today and you know if the answer is yes then you know move forward into the, the conversation if the answer is no then ask why not and the very first person you should connect with your heart should connect with is you you know because we want to build intimacy with ourselves emotionally before moving into intimacy with another right and that will open the subtle layers of your heart you may not feel it it's not a mental process you're not going to have anything real outside of you that's going to tell you this is working or not but trust me <laughs> you know you need to open the subtle layers of the flower that the heart is so that the flower can open to love you know because you can work your way around and do many things you know uh, 21 ritual days of soulmate search uh, cleaning all the relationships with your ex-lovers everything you know that's so much information out there in the heart but if you haven't engaged your heart and if you haven't prepared your heart for intimacy your heart is closed you know and you're getting all these signals uh, you're putting all these signals into the world but you know the very one signal that you should put which is your heart opening to an intimacy is not there right so start there and ask your heart, is your heart ready for a romantic intimate relationship? Because if the answer is yes, then just cultivate that every single day for five minutes when you wake up before you tune into your IG account. And she asked me the very first thing, how do I do that? Well, simply, you just put a hand on your heart and you say, I open myself to love. I'm available to love. I'm connecting my, with myself in the intimacy of myself right now as a ritual, as a gesture that will, you know, empower me to attract love in my life i'm ready my heart is ready i'm saying yes universe get me yes 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 every single day and um you know i think she kept doing a lot of other things <laughs> i'm not putting all of this uh on 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 just this simple gesture but it informed her of the actual reason why she's actually creating space for a relationship in her life right and for after nine years, you know, uh, during these three sessions, she actually, um, she was starting, she was dating, she started dating, you know, they weren't the right men and all of that. I, I, I don't even know, I couldn't, get, you know, I didn't ask her how she got it, but all of a sudden, second session, boom, she was in a relationship. <laughs> And she actually shared with me that, you know, through all the talks that we did, she actually did the gesture with the heart every single day. And it really brought this intention in the body, in the heart, you know, because this is the power of a feminine soul care routine, actual ritual and practice. It's about moving from the mind and actualizing the energy of our intention into the body and letting the body be a channel letting the body be the manifester of the things that we want to attract by working with the energy within our body and feeling and tuning into the energy in our, with our body. And that's just, you know, with the magic of a feminine ritual. And I enforced it that it should be like a couple of days in a row, 7, 14, 21 days, whatever we want to play it, because it is the constancy behind the ritual that brings a lot of the vital energy into one focused intention. In this case intimacy and romantic connection and it worked and it always works you know because it's it's really being intentional right and of course you need process and sometimes overcome fear and doubt and other past life things or you know ex-lovers or you know really uh, clear the space for you to become ready and heal different parts of yourself and so on and so forth. They're all part of the process and they're all, you know, immensely valuable. But I've seen through my own practice that, you know, first of all, you know, when I take time to engage with my feminine energy in a soul connected way through a feminine ritual, I feel good as a woman that day. It just feels good. It just feels damn good and I bring pleasure to me and even if I have a bad day and I and the ritual is not that intense I still feel like I'm compassionately taking care of all the dimensions of myself as a woman you know in a bad day and it builds momentum and because it, it it's something that you know one should do often 
or regularly, that creates a, con a, a cumulative effort. And, you know, that just brings more energy inside of whatever intention um, you may have consciously or consciously. I've seen women being stressed, disconnected from their body, disconnected from their emotions, from their mind, start with a five minute feminine ritual, soul connected practice routine and move naturally, organically into more time for themselves within the ritual move naturally and organically into more creative expression of the feminine ritual without any teachings and then become more present and centered within what they want and then feel that they're harnessing energy within that intention that they focus on and then bring synchronicity into their life inside of that intention that they're cultivating and that just that just was a five minute feminine soul care ritual uh, every single day and have more space more time more room for them you know and even if you have a setback i've had setbacks in my life right where i stopped doing the ritual every day or two, three times a week, or I even stopped it for six months when I started breastfeeding my daughter, just didn't have the time. I just I was like so absorbed by motherhood <laughs> and working that just like, just like, no, I just, you know, stopped for a while. And um, thank God I was practicing before because I had that, you know, momentum within me, but I stopped for a while and I disconnected from myself and I was more in the mind than ever. And I felt strangely uninhibiting my own body, which is actually a normal experience for most women who don't connect with their feminine energy. That's something that I've seen in my practice for the last 10 years on and on and on, like, you know, a huge percent of women. And that's how I started. And that's what triggered me to engage with the feminine heritage and really understand, you know, the way the tribal ancient ways of women connecting with their feminine energy, because I was so versed and educated in multiple disciplines, spiritual and, you know, coaching and, you know, techniques and working, but they're all male. They were all male. And I, at some point I was just tired. I just wanted to feel a woman, feel like a woman and be strong and powerful and a leader being a woman, but like feel like a woman. And that's how I started my search for the feminine. And I, and I was so thirsty of, of ways to meditate and ways to connect that were deeply feminine. So, you know, uh, it's really interesting. And when I started doing the practice after giving birth, uh, there was a point when after, I don't know, six months to a year, you know, I said, well, that's enough. <laughs> you know, I've given everything to my baby little girl. I, I get it. I'm still going to keep showing up as a full on mom, you know, but I need some, some space for myself. Like I, I'm going to go crazy overboard if I don't, you know, if I don't steal five minutes for myself and I honest to God, those five minutes, most of the times I was so tired. It was just like lying on a bed five minutes, but they were my five minutes. <laughs> if you get what I mean. And it was just like my time with myself. And I was a wreck. I was so tired and you know, so all over the place that, you know, I wasn't necessarily connected to my feminine energy in those moments, but that's how I regain a foot in the practice. And I just did it religiously, five minutes, five minutes. If I was snoring uh, or, you know, just being, uh, you know, laying on the on the bed or just breathing, I would just, and just acknowledging how bad I am, right? Like how disconnected I am from myself. That helped too, the breathing and the acknowledgement, it helped. And, you know, I, I gave myself time. I didn't put a pressure on me. I didn't put a deadline. I didn't say like, okay, three weeks from now, you have to feel that and that and that and get back into shape and start meditating and all of that. No, I said, no, if it takes me two years, I don't care. I'm just going to stay here for my five minutes. And, um, you know, if you let go of that pressure and you just engage with the action and be in the present, then you move from the mind into the body and the body starts speaking to you and you know, I didn't have more time to be restful. 
I was still tired. I was still sleep deprived. I was still pressured by all the things I had to be accountable for. And I was, you know, I was suffering from anxiety because it was the first time in my life in which I had those levels of accountability in such a mature, real way in my career and with my baby. But, you know, just breathing with my anxiety, acknowledging the space I was, helped me become more restful. <laughs> helped me have less of the fatigue, you know, and it, it just, you know, it was a good insight that most of our issues not necessarily have to have a medicine in the real world, that sometimes it's just the energy works behind the scene, right? The subtle energy works behind the scene and any feminine ritual, and you're gonna, you know, if you have just joined the live, you know, you have the link in bio and in the comments for binge, binge audio, our curated playlist of, of our podcast um, on feminine soul care, uh, rituals and you can dive there and get your uh, get a context of, of these distinctions and then also join our newsletter and our community and get a f you know our freebie Uranium Beauty uh, which really can give you an access to what I'm talking about in a real tangible way so you know um, feminine rituals just give you this experience of connection with your subtle energy which is your feminine energy which is sexual in nature and it's connected to your vital energy right when we talk about activating the feminine energy we're talking about moving from the mental into the body and feeling the energy that we have in our body which is feminine as women and working with that energy through grounding pra practices and meditations, through opening the heart field, the subtle layers of our energetic body, and just allow the energy to come up, 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 up through the central channels of our uh, energetic body and feel the fountain of life. That's how we call it in the Tao tradition, right? The fountain of life, the life force energy moving through us and healing us the feminine encounter is a deep healing at the very first layer level of it it's realigning and feeling all the holes in our energetic body you know on from where we've you know energy has leaked because of disease because of mental stress because of you know different fragments of our soul being uh, disconnected from us because of pain or trauma or wounds that we've experienced in our life. So it really brings deep healing and deep integration. It brings everything back together. And that's the first la layer. The second layer is it taps, it allows us to tap into our own innate creativity. We're so passionate and so full of fire. And when we cultivate the feminine energy within us and we realize there's something within us that can talk to us, the feminine energy can guide us, can inform us about our emotions and sensations, our energy, our creativity just bursts right and usually women start their feminine practice with the breathing or feminine uh, prayer or a prayer or a mantra and they and they ended with an orgasmic dance you know with painting and dancing and being you know in a vision quest or just having an orgasm energetically or you know healing somebody uh, from afar or in their face because you know they just shift they transmute their energy just becomes creative right and they take on this uh, very important spiritual roles that an initiated woman can take in the moment once she's connected to feminine energy. And the third layer of, of the benefits of having a feminine soul care ritual every single day or a couple of times a week is that it will focus your energy in the direction of your dreams and your intentions. And it will allow you to attract and magnetize and manifest the things that you want with deeper clarity and more fastness. It's one of the most fast processes I've seen of manifesting. Once we, you know, we hold an intention in mind or in our heart and we take the feminine energy and we cultivate it and we release it into the world, right? Um, with the purpose of, of, of putting that intention into motion and making it happen. 
So I hope this conversation, although you haven't shared with me one feminine ritual, I hope maybe, you know, by binging our playlist um, uh, on our uncut podcast can, you know, um, you know, spark ideas uh, and bring more incentive into the conversation for you. Um, I hope this conversation has invited you to consider taking on a feminine soul care ritual uh, and uh, in your life, in your practice, in your lifestyle as a way to feel deeply feminine and more womanly and really enhance those feminine qualities uh, in your life and put them to, uh, to their magic, put them to test. And if you want inspiration, join our link in bio. Uh, and in the linking comments on Facebook and join our binge playlist of how to turn self-care routine into soul care ritual and also join our newsletter if you haven't uh, done it so far and you're not um, part of our community and will definitely um, and request for our Bioradian mini uh, Bioradian beauty mini course it's free and this is how you can start your exploration of feminine rituals thank you so much for this live thank you for this conversation and um, you know uh, good inspiration ahead of you to connect at least start with five days uh, five minutes a day of tuning into your heart it's deeply deeply nourishing and it will uh, inform you about what your soul is craving for thank you so much for this virtual circle and i hope i'll see you soon